Hello, and welcome to Bayou Time. I'm your host, Tan McGee, and today we have a very interesting guest for you. We have uh, Senate candidate Stephen Swiber. Um, we'll get started. Stephen, uh, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Well, thanks, Tanner. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, I'm originally from Morgan City, but now uh, my wife and I have set down roots in Gibson. I work in Morgan City, but we also have uh, Diamond Services Corporation, where we also have facility in, uh, in Terrebonne Parish as well, right there in Gibson. So you were raised and born in Morgan City? Yes, sir. Uh, born and raised in Morgan City, went to Berwick High School. That's where my mom taught school, right there across the Atchafalaya River. So I'm a product of public schools from right down here in, in yeah. St. Mary Parish. We actually had that in common. My parents were both educators. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a teacher and then a principal um, in public school system. I attended public and private schools growing up. Um, and that's an interesting point because there's actually a lot of people in Baton Rouge at the Capitol who don't believe in public education. Uh, so what, what kind of ideas are you going to bring towards the Capitol as far as it goes for schools? Yeah, absolutely. So my, my education platform is to empower teachers and empower parents all because we're working for the same goal, which is to, uh, to educate the students. The, uh, providing innovation, providing choice in the education system does not require dismantling uh, the public education system as it exists. It just means we have to bring a new perspective into that system. And you said that you uh, manage Diamond Services. Diamond Services is a long-term oil field service company in St. Mary Parish, but it's been doing some kind of new things under your leadership. Y'all been kind of transitioning. What's been going on with Diamond Services? Absolutely. So uh, my grandpa started that company back in 1962. Uh, they installed a lot of platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. We've removed a lot of platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. We dredged a lot of rig locations back in the day, but now we're taking that dredging expertise bringing it to uh, coastal restoration and port maintenance. We've been working a lot of infrastructure projects, and we've been uh, and doing a lot of good things on the coast for customers like Ducks Unlimited as well. Yeah, and you kind of, your campaign platform, you're calling economic development all above, meaning there's a lot of different things that we can do as a community. Uh, what does all above mean? It, it really means getting us ready for the 21st century jobs or the jobs that uh, are needed in the future, which is why a, a big part of my platform is to expand uh, vocational education, technical education, both at the high school and post-secondary levels, to make sure that our workforce is ready for the jobs that are coming to the southeast. Uh, right now, uh, there's a lot of jobs leaving uh, the Rust Belt, the North, uh, the West Coast, and they're moving to Texas, Arkansas, Alabama, and Mississippi. There's really no reason those jobs shouldn't be here. We just need to be prepared to take to bring those companies here and get those jobs. Now, you and I have talked about this before. Economic development is not the only thing, or it's kind of intertwined with economic development. Your campaign is really focused on insurance. Is that fair to say? I think the, the big problem is our out-migration, but the, the building blocks of that are our public services, our education, our health care. As we discuss, economic opportunity, you have to have a job to stay here, uh, but then also the, the, the cost of living. If we have a higher cost of living than all the states around us, people will naturally find their way out. And you're saying part of that higher cost of living is the insurance cost that everybody's paying for. So you, you get elected day one. What is Steven Swiber, what is Senator Steven Swiber going to do about insurance? I do like the sound of Senator Steven Swiber. <laughs> no, the, uh, the, the, I, I'm the only candidate in my race with a, with a published plan to address the insurance crisis. Uh, you know, step one is stronger consumer protection at the Department of Insurance. Uh, also included in my plan is occupational licensing reform, uh, uh, reform of the way that we fund and select our flood protection projects, and, uh, and, and to fully fund and really make more accessible the fortified home program that the legislature, in its wisdom, already put in place to make sure that we're ready for the next hurricane before it comes, because it's that lack of preparedness that really drives up our claims. And what kind of funding level do you think the fortified roof program needs to be appropriately funded? Well, let's see. I, think the, I believe the legislature already put in about uh, $30 million dollars uh, is that is that correct? Is that the number that I, I think I remember there? being something around that? Around that yeah, point. I think I think it would need to be significantly more than that. Uh, but no, I don't I don't have the exact number uh, in mind. But I think the way we can make it a lot more accessible uh, to homeowners is to take away the uh, the paperwork involved with them accessing those funds, and they don't have to do the work themselves. We can either do that through the roofing contractors or through the insurance companies if they're replacing your roof on a claim. And you've been sort of also, uh, uh, to be fair, I want to say hard on incumbents. Um, what do you see as part of your campaign as being somewhat anti-incumbency? Well, absolutely. So I think the, 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 the way that we are losing uh, our people to the states around us, I don't believe that it's because uh, our people are, are any worse or our culture 
is at a disadvantage when it comes to attracting people or keeping people here. I think uh, I'm, the reason I've been anti, uh, at least people who have been in the system for a long time, is that sometimes they defend their record because they don't want to admit that uh, we have some structural problems with our government, and that is the only difference between us and the states that are currently kicking our butts right now. Yes, and so when you say the states, you're talking about Texas and Alabama, and you're, and you're saying we need to start looking to do in some of those strategies. What would Senator Swiber do on day one to kind of start competing with those states? Well, absolutely. Well, Arkansas just, just passed a very uh, historic and significant uh, education reform that not only gives educators and teachers a significant pay raise, but also increases the options for choice and innovation within that system. But I also, you know, I believe we should go forward and centralize our sales tax collection system. And I do believe that we need to uh, empower our local governments, empower our, our, our road construction, our education, our parks and recreation departments, rather than sending those funds off to Baton Rouge to be appropriated back down to the local governments by those legislators, I think those money should stay in these communities where they can do the most good and, and where public officials are the most accountable and closest to the people. I was a big proponent of the centralizing sales tax when I was in the legislature. I guess I'm still there until, until January. Um, I think it's a, a great idea. You're going to make a lot of sheriffs mad and you're going to make a lot of school boards mad. I, I know they all had a, I think I, Sometimes I felt like I had a target with my face on it with, the, with that collective group. But, uh, but I hope to make that up by giving them their autonomy back over their budgets rather than having to go beg their legislators for the money back that should have never left their districts in the first place. I think local officials have a lot to gain from a Senator Steven Swiber. Uh, Absolutely. And thank you, Stephen. Um, we appreciate you having you on, and we look forward to seeing the rest of the campaign and how it goes from here. That's all the time we have for Senate candidate Stephen Swiber. We'll be back in a moment with Bayou Time.